say the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that even of the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which, which came of the giants and were in our sight, our own sight, as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. One more verse for your consideration, right over in chapter 14 and verses 24. But my servant Caleb. Because he had another spirit or a different spirit filled of the Holy Ghost within him and had followed me fully or wholly or totally him when I bring it to the land where unto he went and his seed shall possess it. I want you to read chapter 13 and chapter 14 for your consideration. The report my brothers and sisters, three things I want you to get. The exploration, the exaggeration, and the expectation. Glory to God. Now, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a time where we are called by God to make exploration. One of the great explorers of the time was known as Christopher Columbus, this Italian that he went from uh, uh, nations to nations, he went discovering uh, islands uh, and he discovered America. The man left his comfort zone uh, and discovered uh, new territories. Uh, I believe uh, this is a season uh, when God is calling us uh, to discover new territories uh, as he had blessed uh, and made a promise uh, unto Abraham, Isaac and Jacob uh, that the land uh, that the
the proper and evil report of the land who overcome the saying that they saw it, but they were not seeing it through the eyes of God. You, you may have been seeing things and, and it's not coming through the lens of God. The Bible says that you have to walk by faith and not by sight. If you keep living your life by what you're seeing by sight, you're going to be careful. They came back and said unto Moses, the people are bigger, they're stronger, they're fortified. Moses, in other words, they're saying to Moses and to Aaron that we cannot possess this land. How many times the enemy whispers in your head, saying you cannot get what God has in store for your life because it seems insurmountable. It seems like the task is too much. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Giants in the land. 
the sons of Enoch, the Nephilims, they were destroyed by God in Genesis the sixth chapter. But I want you to capture the profile and the lens of, of the scripture that the, the men, but the men that went up the left side, we be unable to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. They, they search the land and they said that the people are larger in stature. I watched verse number 23 of uh, chapter 13 uh, and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which came, which come out of the giants of Nephilim. They were tracing back the giants to Genesis chapter 6. I want you to know that sometimes we can be magnified problems uh, that God has already dealt with uh, in our lives. Uh, we are magnifying things. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a lack. Maybe it's a curse. But God is on your side. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in this world. And there we saw the sons of the giants. The sons of Gaia, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. In other words, how you're seeing yourself. It's how others are going to perceive you. They said, they saw giants and they saw their lives as grasshoppers. They were fearful of what God was getting ready to defeat. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that Caleb was a true worshiper. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was a worshiper and a warrior and a winner. And I want to declare in your life and decree and declare right about here that for a worshiper, you are a warrior in the spirit and you are a winner. That you can overcome false accusations. You can overcome the bad news and the bad reports. I wonder what God, what the enemy has whispered in your ear saying that you can never surmount to be anything in this life. That's a liar from the pits of hell. I want you to understand the difference. 
about Kedia and Joshua. The Bible says that Kedia had another spirit. In other words, he had an attitude to be a conqueror. Kedia had a different kind of spirit. I wonder what, what spirit is driving your life. I wonder what spirit is controlling your life. You have to decree and declare that I can. That God, I want a different spirit. That God, I need another spirit. I need a Holy Ghost in my life. I need a spirit of truth. I need a spirit of God in my life, in my family, in my church, in my community, in my nation. But care and a different spirit. He had an attitude that he was a servant of God. He had an attitude that took it to a different altitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. He was a man driven by God. He was a man committed by God. He was full of God. He did not have the spirit of the world. The Bible says in uh, uh, chapter 14 of Numbers, but my servant king is a servant unto God because you have another spirit with him. And I followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land where it will be Not only will he be blessed, the Bible says the seed shall possess it. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your hearing my voice that another spirit comes upon you. That every curse of an addiction shall be broken up in the name of Jesus. That the spirit of Say this 
return to me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. God wants to make you a brand new person. Maybe you think of this all over. God is sending word through this channel that you can be blessed. You and your life will never be the same again. He wants to raise you up to be a second man. He wants to raise you up to be a princess and a prince with God. This is the season. 